Today we're going to be replacing the rear brakes on a 1995 Pontiac Grand Am. It has drum brakes in the back. We've got both back wheels off the ground and on jack stands. Wheel chalk under the front wheel. We'll pull both wheels off and we'll get started here. For this brake job today we're going to do kind of a poor man's brake fluid system flush. We're going to suck the fluid out of that uh, master cylinder tank with kind of a turkey baster and put all new fluid in there to start with. Then after we bleed them we'll at least got some new fluid in the back brake tubes. So we'll suck all that fluid out of there, squirt it into a bottle and then we'll refill this master cylinder tank and then start with the brake job. We've got that tank sucked pretty much dry. Now we're going to fill it most of the way up with DOT3 brake fluid. DOT3 is fine for these old cars. Once you have the tire off the next step is to remove that drum. In this case I still have a couple of these little washers on a couple of the studs that you can just uh, screw off there. They're really not necessary but uh, they're still on this car so take those off first. Got those two little retainer clips off of there. Next you can try and get that drum off of there by just grabbing it. If it's been on for a while it's probably going to be stuck you're going to have to get yourself a big hammer, give it a few wraps. I can see this one's moving, so now hopefully it'll just come right off of there. If you can see that the drum is loose, that it's moving around the studs, but when you try and pull it, it just won't come off, there's a good chance that your drum has got a big groove worn in it, so you've got an outer edge that sticks down and the brake shoes are coming in and hitting that as you're trying to pull it off. In that case you're going to have to get a little plug out of the back and turn a little star wheel to pull those shoes in. I'll show you that star wheel later and how you would do that but for now I'm just going to pull this drum off. I've got the drum off and exposed the brake system parts. Now the reason I'm doing this brake job is not because my shoes are worn out, they're actually in pretty good shape but because I've got a leaking wheel cylinder and it's causing these brakes to hang up, kind of lock up on me. When I go to stop, you know, it jerks and pops and grinds. If you look right down in there, you can see that it's wet. That is brake fluid that's coming out of this master cylinder here. Most people would just buy a rebuilt or brand new master cylinder for like 12 bucks and put that on. In this case I've decided to rebuild these master cylinders right here on the car. The main reason is one, I just kind of wanted to show a video on how to do that. And two, I don't have to remove the brake line in the back and run any risk of twisting that off. Probably wouldn't have been a bad idea just to replace these wheel cylinders. Again, I didn't want to mess with that brake line right there and end up having to replace it all the way back to where it connects in over here. So I'm just going to rebuild these wheel cylinders in place. Ended up costing me almost as much as buying new wheel cylinders. There's a lot of dust and powder inside of here that you're going to want to wash out before you start really getting into things. It's best if you don't breathe that dust. Most brake shoes, if not all anymore, do not have asbestos in them. I checked and my new ones don't and I'm pretty sure that these that I put on a few years ago would not have had asbestos either. But again, I'm going to spray this down real well, get most of this dust off before I start working. I could use a uh, brake cleaner to do that, 
but I just use a little bit of soap in some water and spray that all over here. You know, this is all going to be torn apart and cleaned and new shoes, so getting a little soapy water on here is not going to hurt anything. You're going to want to inspect your drum, feel it, see if you've got any deep gouges and grooves in here, and especially check if you've got a step right here on the edge. If you've got deep gouges or a step right here, you're probably going to want to just get a new drum nowadays. You could take it in somewhere and try and have them turn it, but probably more than half the time they're going to tell you you're just better off getting a new drum it's about the same cost. The trick to doing these brake jobs is to do one side at a time. That way you can always go over to the other side and reference the way it's put back together. I like to take pictures as well, so I'm going to take a few pictures here to help me remember which spring was on top, how they were hooked in, so on and so forth. Another good tip is that it's a good idea to always get a spring kit. Comes with all the springs, the clips. Costs about 10 bucks per side to get all new springs, clips, everything. There's also the little star wheel down at the bottom, the self adjuster. We'll see that later. You're going to want to inspect that. Hopefully it turns easy and looks good along with the little plate that it rubs on. If anything's not working there, you can buy a new kit for that as well. You want to check your box of new brake shoes. Make sure that it came with two long shoes and two short shoes. The back lining is longer than the front lining. So there will be two short shoes and two long shoes for the back. They could accidentally get put on the wrong side, but you just want to make sure the long one goes in the back, the short one in the front. That just has to do with the way the tire rotates and how it's pushing out here at the bottom. This back shoe just tends to get grabbed more and it wears more than the front shoe, so there's less material up in front. There are some brake tools that are real handy to have. This particular tool slips right in here and allows you to get that top off of that spring, one on each side. This tool here has a hook on it and you can get it on here and you can pull these springs off. To be honest, most of the time I just grab them with a pair of pliers and get them over that pin. It does have on the other side a nice little feature where you can get that spring up under there, get this over the top of it, bend it over the top and get those springs back on. So this is a handy brake tool as well. Down on the bottom, this little star wheel, you can get it with a regular screwdriver. It's only going to turn one direction. That's the direction that makes the pads go out. If you tried to turn it back the other direction, it's not going to move. You could lift this. This is rubbing on that star wheel. You could lift that up. Now you could turn it either direction if you needed to. And that's what you would have to do if your drum would not come off. To be honest, I don't know how you get in there pull this thing up out of the way and turn that wheel all at the same time, but there must be a tool, a bent tool or something that allows you to do that. I would just keep hoping that that darn drum comes off. You're going to want to pay special attention to how this bottom spring hooks into this shoe over here, then comes across and hooks into that shoe over there. Uh, the star wheel is towards the back. 
and then how these springs up on top lay in there. There is a crossbar that has a spring on it on the front side. There's no spring on the back side. That bar bridges the two shoes. So let's get down to taking some of these springs off. That's how it goes. You buy these guys all these special tools and they just get a pair of needle nose. Okay, not needle nose, we'll go for regular pliers. Regular pliers, get that spring off of there. Can leave it on the shoe. Next is the spring over here. Just don't hit yourself in the face. I've done it before. Next, this back, the big one, comes off of there. Just kind of lay that down so you can kind of remember how it was in there. And then this tool, there's a slot in here, there's a slot in this uh, top cap. You have to push down on the top retainer, get it to turn and line up with the little stud that's coming through. It's kind of like putting a button through a buttonhole. I'm going to work on getting both of those off. Push down, turn. Get it to the right spot, release, it'll come off of there. I mentioned I've been getting a lot of brake noise back here, wheel locking up, popping. You can see the brake padding is starting to kind of delaminate and come off in chunks. It just gets some of that brake fluid on it and then it starts to slip and deteriorate and cause all kinds of problems here. So you don't want brake fluid at all dripping inside this drum assembly. Alright, got this first one off of here, that spring, there's a little rod in there. That rod will just push straight out the back. Not a bad idea, like I said, to replace these. You get the spring kit, the little uh, studs, new springs, new tops to those springs. The whole works, it's like ten bucks, but uh, I'm not going to do that today. I'm a cheapo. If I have to get back in here, well, that's just the way it works out. I'm going to go ahead and get this spring that's holding the shoes together down on the bottom. I'm going to get it pulled out of there, pulled loose at least on one side. Now this shoe can come out. I'm just going to set it down there with the spring still in it. Now here's this crossbar. There is a spring on this side. You're going to want to pay attention to where that bar goes in. You can't hardly miss it when you put it back together, but that bar can come out at this point. I'm going to carefully lay it down in here in the orientation and the way it came out because it is a little bit different. You can see that uh, it's not symmetrical, so it's going to want to go back in a certain way. So I'm going to lay this down in the orientation, that direction that it actually should go back in. I can take the self-adjuster out at this point, turn it a little bit. Feels like it's moving pretty freely, so I think we're in good shape there. This end piece should also rotate smoothly. We'll eventually take this apart, put some grease in there, put it back together, grease these threads, clean everything up. We'll lay that down here in the orientation that it came out. Now I'm going to take this tool, get this other spring off, and at that point I will be able to take this back shoe off. 
One difference on this back shoe, once I take this clip off, the shoe will be able to come out of there. There's also this self-adjuster mechanism. Here's that spring that was under there, so I'm going to go ahead and lay that down in the orientation that it was in there. But again, once I get this spring loose, this brake will come off. I'll take the spring off with it. There's also this uh, self-adjuster is underneath the spring on the back shoe, so you want to pay attention to that. A lot of times the trick to getting this off is you have to put your finger in the back and push on that stud. Otherwise when you push this in you're turning everything. So there I got it to turn and pop off. So I've got the spring. Lay it down. I've got the self adjuster. Has a spring on it as well. This spring right here slips onto that stud. So we'll kind of take that out of there and lay it down in that orientation. Alright, a couple of things here. One, I've got this is the emergency brake mechanism. It's right now hanging from the cable. When I took this shoe off, I had this little bushing fall out. And that makes you nervous. You don't know where that went. But that actually goes into the shoe and then the self-adjusting mechanism goes through there. So that bushing, that bushing is in the shoe on one side and through the self-adjuster on the other. So that's what you've got going on there. And again, this right here can just come loose. And at that point, there is a little clip on the back here. We'll have to eventually get that clip off of there, get that little stud to come through, and then reattach this emergency brake thing to the new shoe. One other reason that I wanted to rebuild these cylinders on the car was that I'd read one review that this brake cylinder was difficult to get out of there as it would hit on this this hub. I, I don't think that would probably end up being a problem especially if you took the bleeder off, got the two bolts out of the back, got the brake line disconnected, hit it with a hammer. I imagine it would come out of there and one way or another you could wiggle it out of there. But uh, I'm going to try and avoid having to do that by rebuilding this on the car. To rebuild this cylinder, you're going to need to get this piston out of there. I pushed it in. It comes back out. It gets bigger on the inside, so you're going to have to get this dust cover to pop off of there. We're just going to get a screwdriver back in here, work this dust cover off. Then we can get this side to come out. Then we'll do the same to the other. We'll see what's inside there. Okay. We pried the dust cap off of there. That exposed the cylinder. Wiggle that out of there. You can see what we have there. So it's perfectly symmetrical, so there's really no way to get it back in there wrong. We'll do the same thing to the other side. Got the dust cap and the cylinder off the other side. I'm just going to keep the orientation of these. Uh, separated so I put them back in the same side they came out of. Shouldn't have to do that, they should be identical but uh, better safe than sorry. Now inside of here we're going to find two rubber cups, one on each side and a spring in the middle and we're going to want to 
kind of pry those out with a screwdriver and pay attention to the orientation so is you know the cupped end flat towards the outside or is the flat end on the inside so I'm gonna play with that for a little bit I've got a pan back underneath because eventually when I get these out I'm gonna start dripping even more brake fluid but the simplest way to get this out is to just push from one side push in here and the parts will come out the other side and this first one when it comes out I can see that the flat side is toward me So the spring kind of goes into that cupped side. The flat part was facing out and pushing on the cylinder. And I see a spring coming out now. So we've got a spring. It is symmetrical. And then you can just push back this way. Okay, now we put the screwdriver in the other side. Gently push. And here comes that rubber piece out. Now that one wasn't so obviously obvious which direction it was in there. But again, flat side out, cupped side, had the spring inside of it. Now at this point, you're going to start dripping a little bit of brake fluid. I do have the cap back on the reservoir, so it'll tend to pull a vacuum and won't leak a, a lot of fluid out right now. I don't mind that it's leaking some fluid. I want to do a little bit of a flush anyway. Now that you've got all the pieces out of there, I can see straight through it. I'm going to take my pinky, stick in there, just kind of feel feel for any ridges, gouges, any of that kind of stuff. Feels pretty good. So I'm going to shine the light through it, clean it up a little bit, look inside there. Once we know that it's in halfway decent shape, we'll go ahead and get the brake hone out. Give it a few strokes with that. Put it back together. Do just a little bit of cleaning out here. Then I'm going to take a visual look inside. Now I've got my now I've got my wheel cylinder hone connected to my drill. You're going to want to use a variable speed drill. I've got this one set on low RPM. You're going to want to be very gentle. This is not a very robust tool. Easy to break. You're going to want to make sure you put it in there start it rotating then don't push it in any farther than about a quarter of these shoes sticking out the other side pull it back and forth do that a few times look inside see if you look like you've got some shiny metal in there if you do you can quit if not maybe give it another four or five passes should be adequate wouldn't hurt to get a drop or two of fluid on the stones get them in there Kind of get a feel for how far it's going to be to the other side. Don't want them to come out very far. The wheel cylinder rebuild kit comes with some extra parts, dust caps. So you need to figure out which ones you need. I suppose they give you these so that you can uh, fit other models. But the ones that we needed match up with these. So now we've run the hone in and out of that cylinder quite a few times. I didn't feel much friction, so I did it, oh, you know, for 30 seconds or so. Uh, took my glove off, ran my pinky in there. I could feel some grit. Um, felt pretty smooth, though. Then ran a paper towel through there a few times, got the grit cleaned out. Now I'm going to spray some brake cleaner all over here. I did take a wire brush, kind of rubbed a few things especially around these surfaces where the dust caps are going to go over. Get those as clean as you can. Then I'm going to spray this with brake cleaner, get it cleaned up. We're going to put them back together.
you're going to want to get the bore of that brake cylinder good and cleaned out. So we're going to run a paper towel through there a few times. Lubricate all the parts. Obviously make sure you don't leave any sections of paper towel stuck in that cylinder, so give it a good look when you're done. Lube it up with some brake fluid. Don't be afraid to get your finger in there and kind of help clean that out, get a little brake fluid on it. Move it in and out, you can kind of feel some grit and eventually you kind of feel that getting flushed away. You're going to want to have that good and clean, free of any grit and dirt. Alright, we're ready to lube it up, put the parts back in. We've got that cylinder nice and clean. I've taken a look from one end to the other. Don't see any debris in there. It looks pretty nice and shiny, no big gouges. So we're ready to put it back together. Slip the spring in there. Then we've got the two pistons. We want the flat side facing out. I did lubricate those very gently with just a little bit of brake fluid. You can take your piston. I'm going to lubricate it with just a little bit of brake fluid. I'm going to take my piston and uh, slosh it with a little bit of brake fluid, I guess. Uh, a little dab will do it. Put that in over here. Put my finger in over here so I don't kick anything out. Get that going in. Feels pretty smooth. We'll do the same thing with the other side. We'll get it cleaned off. A little dab of brake fluid on it. Get it slipped in this other side. Okay. Dab of brake fluid on there. Gonna want to make sure we don't push the other one out. They do want to kind of spring out. Make sure they're turning good. Pistons are moving. I'm feeling some spring. Work those in there. Make sure it feels good and smooth. So the piston's a little bit lubricated. And now we can slide the new dust caps over. that dust cap nice and seated up there. Get this dust cap slipped over there. And seat it into place. Make sure it's seated in the back as well as all the way around. Both sides look good. And now you have a rebuilt wheel cylinder and we didn't have to take the brake line loose. We didn't have to mess around trying to get the wheel cylinder around this hub. And really there's not much to it. I mean if you were doing this not on camera and you'd done it once or twice, you could do it in like five minutes. I could show you the reassembly of the brake shoes but I'll probably shortcut a few things. I mean. It's really just in reverse. The one thing is on the other side of this there's a little clip we have to slide off. Get this piece out, slip it through the new shoe, put the clip back on it. There's this little bushing that slips into this hole here in the shoe and the self adjuster swivels on that bushing. Other than that it's just hooking the springs back up and uh, doing some bleeding. 
I might show you a little bit about that. The only real complicated one is this back shoe because it's got this emergency brake lever on it. I had to again pull that little key off of the stud and move this shaft, move this uh, brake, emergency brake shaft over to the new shoe. And then basically this shoe will just hook over that, hook over that cable. You're going to want to take just a little bit of grease on your fingers and put it on these spots where you can see that the shoe rubs on the back plate. Looks like about three spots on each side. Then basically get this uh, back shoe hooked over the emergency brake cable. Get it lifted up. Get your hand back in behind there. Hold on to that little pin, get it through there, get it kind of lined up in here where it's supposed to go, and then get one of these springs on there. There's also this little, little bushing that has to go on there first. And then there's going to be this little automatic adjuster. I'm going to want to put a little dab of grease right in here. Slide this on. Get that spring holding this all together. That's the most complicated part. After that it's just putting springs and stuff back on. Okay, I got the hard side on. Got the emergency brake cable hooked in. We got the little bushing in the shoe here. Got the self-adjuster underneath the spring. Got a spring on the self-adjuster here bumping into the shoe. Whoever designed this thing, you'd like to kick their butt. But I got it pushed in, turned 90 degrees, got that spring holding that shoe on. Do the same thing over on the front with the shorter shoe. And then put all the springs back in and the adjuster. We'll go ahead and clean that adjuster up, put a little grease on it, make sure everything's turning smooth. You're going to want to keep your fingers clean, don't get any grease on the brake shoe linings. I've installed this little crossbar. Now I'm going to install the shorter shoe up front and then we'll start on the springs. You're going to want to clean this little star wheel piece or your self adjuster. You can unscrew this all the way, kind of clean the threads, make sure this turns smooth. This end piece comes off and clean in here regrease that, clean everything up, probably put just a little dab of grease down in here and down in this end and then you're going to slip it back in there. Then there's a spring that goes across and holds the bottom together. Got everything back together. I put just a dab of grease up here where the shoe rubs on that uh, location and then we've got the star wheel back together down there with a little grease kind of on each side and then basically at this point we're ready to start running that little self adjuster wheel out and pushing the shoes out trying to put the drum on see if it starts to rub a little bit if it doesn't rub take the drum back off adjust the adjuster so it pushes out a little bit farther keep doing that till you get just a little bit of drag and then you're ready to put the drum on you want to make sure you didn't get any grease or brake fluid on your brake shoes if you did take a little brake clean get it cleaned up but best practice is clean hands and don't touch those shoes while you've got it torn down this far now's a good time to take and spin this hub See if the bearings feel good. This one feels nice and smooth. I don't feel any grumbling, don't feel any catching. Uh, it's turning easy, so this hub, hub bearing appears to be good. My drum looks good on the inside, no gouges, scratching. I'm going to take a little bit of rough sandpaper, scuff it up a little bit, and 
case there's any glazing from the uh, brake shoes being coated with brake fluid and kind of slipping in there. But it looks pretty shiny. Scuff it up. Should be good. If you want to be nice to the next guy, put a light coating of grease on this uh, hub assembly. Keep the brake drum from sticking on there. A few times off and on, I finally got it to the point where I'm getting some pretty good drag now. I'm having a little trouble turning it by hand. So we know we're rubbing on there a little bit. Should be close enough. Now we attach our one-man brake bleeding tool. We've got the tube going all the way to the bottom. Some fresh fluid in there. Tube's coming out. Goes all the way up to an open bleeder. I'll go pump it a few times, then we'll close that bleeder and we should be in good shape. You want to make sure you don't let the reservoir up here get low and suck air into the system. Then you'd have a big job. So keep filling it up. Alright, we got the other side done, which was the driver's side. This is the rear passenger side. Got the drum off, showed you how to do that if you have to hit it with a hammer a few times. What we're going to do now is just spray this down and get it cleaned off. I'm going to use just uh, mainly water with a couple drops of soap in it. You could use brake clean, but this stuff's like, you know, four bucks a can. Maybe you get it on sale for the cheap stuff for two for six bucks, but, you know, why not save a little money? And just hit it with some soapy water and a little spray bottle. Again, we're not going to reuse these shoes. Nothing in here hasn't seen water when you go through a big puddle. So it isn't going to hurt anything to get a little bit of a little bit of water on there. At least get the bulk of it cleaned off with this, then hit it with the brake clean later. Got everything sprayed down with some uh, soapy water. Now we're going to start getting these springs off of here. There's great videos out there. Eric the car guy has a great video on how to do these drum brakes. And he shows you kind of how to use the tool, but he kind of struggles with it too. Again, you don't want to hit yourself in the face, but just grab that baby. Get it off of there. This one's a little bit harder to get a hold of. Okay. I'm gonna lay these down on the ground in the position that they came off. For this bigger link that's connected to the automatic adjuster, if you just stick a screwdriver down in here and pry that adjuster forward a little bit. It'll allow you to get that right off of there. Now we'll use this tool, which is the one tool that I think is actually of value. You notice that it does have notches in it. If you got the light just right, you can see down in there and see what you're doing. So I'm going to reach in behind, touch that little pin or sometimes they call it a nail. Go ahead and get this in there. Give it a 90 degree turn. Pop that spring off. We can then take this self adjuster out of there along with its spring. Again laying everything down on a piece of paper in the order that I took it out, kind of arranged like I took it out. Same thing with the other side here, hold in the back on the pin, push this in, give it a 90 degree turn. Took a few tries there, but got that one. All right, now we're down to on the bottom. There is a spring and there's a self adjuster star wheel. I'm going to try and leave that spring in place. 
So I'm going to pull out on these shoes, pull the uh, shoes out of there. You can see how this park brake thing was hanging up in there on the cable. You got this cross brace that had a spring on it. Have to find that spring. This park brake adjuster is held on by a little C C clip back in here. Pop that C clip off, a little stud pops out. We can put that on the new shoe. Here's the self-adjuster star wheel. We'll get that apart, clean it, and grease it. Here's the spring that was on this uh, crossbar. One thing to note on this self-adjusting lever, there is a little bushing right here. Goes through that lever, then the other end goes into the shoe. It's going to rotate on that little bushing. Here's a little spring that goes on there. I've got all the parts laid out as close as I can get to the way they were kind of back in there. That's going to help you out later. After spraying it with a little bit of brake clean, everything's you know fairly dry now. I'm going to go ahead and pry the dust cap off of the wheel cylinder. Just get a screwdriver in there. At that point, you can kind of see if there's any fluid in there. This one looks fairly dry. Let's see if the see if the cylinder turns. Okay, the the piston turns pretty freely. That's a good sign. Let's go ahead and pull that straight out. Set that one down here on the right side. Now we're going to pop the dust cap off the other side. Okay. That dust cap came off. Now at this point, there's just a little rubber cup in here. And probably the easiest thing to do is what I just did, and that's just push everything on out the other side. So the little little rubber cup popped out, and I know from the previous one that the cupped end went onto the spring. The flat side was pushing out on the piston. Go ahead and bring the spring out. And go ahead and just push this one on through. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and stick my finger in there and just see what it feels like. Feels pretty good to me. Looks good in there. We're going to go ahead and run the brake hone in there a few times. Polish out that uh, inside. Got the brake hone on a drill. This is a pretty delicate tool, so you want to make sure that uh, you don't stick it too far and push it out the other side. So you kind of want to go ahead and push it out the other side, get a feel for how far that's going to be. And kind of, once you kind of have your bearings on about how far it's going to take, go ahead and get up to speed.
I can kind of watch the shoes come out each side. Nice pipe cleaner brush like this ought to work pretty good. Get the big pieces out with that. Now we'll follow that up with pulling a paper towel through there. Maybe a quick spray of brake clean in there. I'm not seeing much drip out of here for brake fluid. I did have some dripping out on the other side. I'm just going to go step on the brake a little bit and see if I uh, pump some fluid out of there. Okay, I could hear some running out. That goes ahead, gets that cylinder a little bit lubricated. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bleed the heck out of this thing. I kind of want to do a little. Uh, brake flush while I'm at it so if I get a little air in there that's okay we're gonna bleed a lot of that back out of there now we'll go ahead and do the reassembly of the wheel cylinder I'll take a little wire brush clean up your pistons a little bit maybe a little light sandpaper get any varnish off of them so get those good and clean get your wheel cylinder kit this has got the spring the two cups, it's actually got four dust caps, two are for some other brand of car, some other model. So we'll only use two of those four, so get those out and get them ready. So here are the parts. This one and this one we don't need. So we've got the two cups, one flat side, one cup side. The two dust caps, they just slip on the end, spring in the middle. So let's uh, lubricate these lightly and then we're going to reassemble it. Now I went in and I washed my hands. I want them good and clean for this. I'm going to just lightly lubricate this piston with some brake fluid. Brake fluid isn't going to kill you if you get a little bit on your hands. You know, I'm going to go wash it off as soon as I'm done here. Work that little cup into that cylinder, flat side out, you can kind of straighten it out with the plunger. Yeah, it feels like it's square in there. Slide the spring in, no need to lubricate that. Second and final cup here, plunger. Lightly lubricate the piston. Okay, everything feels like it's moving pretty smooth. Got to be careful, it's going to want to pop stuff out on you. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of push it in a little bit to my left here. First, I'm going to lightly lubricate this. I'm going to grab that dust cap, slip it over that little shaft, then make sure it's seated. And this other one's going to want to pop out on you, so I'm hanging on to it. Push everything in. Get that dust cap seated. And there, you've got a rebuilt wheel cylinder without having to undo two rusty screws in the back, worry about twisting the old brake line, and you don't have to worry about trying to get this uh, wheel cylinder past this hub. So, it's pretty easy cost just a little bit less a lot more of your time but you know in my case it was more about not having to take that brake line out 
and mess with trying to wiggle that wheel cylinder out from around this hub, any problems like that. So, Plus I just wanted to show people how to rebuild a wheel cylinder. It's not real easy to see on video, but this drum on the passenger side has some, some gouges in it, some grooves that I can get my fingernail in. So we're going to go ahead and replace this one. We've got a new drum here. New drums come with a uh, rust proof coating. You want to take some brake clean and clean off that inside surface. Go from there. But at least for the inside, the part that contacts the brake shoes, you want to go ahead and hit it with some brake clean. Get a nice clean paper towel. Make sure that rust inhibitor is wiped off of at least the inside. You always want to do a sanity check. Look everything over before you put it back together. I noticed that that crossbar was not in the proper slot. It was down just a little bit, so I took my screwdriver, worked it on up, but that would have not been good to put it back together with that out of place. You can buy a pretty nice brake bleeding system at Harbor Freight for like 25 bucks on sale. Works pretty well. But we're going to go old school today. I've rigged up the one man brake bleeding system. Got a bottle with the tube going to the bottom. Tube goes up. Has an upward bend to it. I've got a little support there. The reason for that support is I want to hold that tube nice and square on that zerk. Now I've got an assistant Hello. here and he's going to pump the brakes for me. Yeah. So go ahead and pump the brakes. Okay. Slowly? Slowly. Okay. You can see the fluid moving in there each time he pumps and slowly this bottle fills up and I'm going to flush quite a bit of fluid through there not seeing any air bubbles at this time so this one appears pretty free of air where I would look for the air bubbles is of course right here as it comes out now one thing you want to make very sure of is as you do this don't let your master cylinder run dry you're going to want to pay close attention to the level of fluid inside your master cylinder. Do a little bit of bleeding, come up, top it off, go back, do it again. Don't let it run dry. If you let it run dry, you're going to put air in the system in all four wheels, and you're going to have to bleed all four, and that's going to take a little while to run it all the way through. The side benefit of that is that you get a nice flush. You can get rid of the old dirty brake fluid and get all nice new clean so it's not the end of the world but should be avoided if you don't want to add extra work to your project. Pretty much same setup for the front calipers. I want that hose to go up, turn down, go into my little reservoir bottle there. But you want to have a little bit of an upward slope there so that the fluid doesn't run away from you. You're going to have a little bit of fluid built up in this little section right here. Bubbles will float to the top. You can go now. I'm not seeing any air in this line. 